Hey guys, it's Ranger Adam. Welcome back to another League of Legends video. Finally, after what? I don't know how long. <laughs> also, don't mind the lighting. It's quite shit. I, I still haven't figured that out. Um, but anyways, as you guys know, the new League of Legends cinematic was released like about a few days ago or last week or so. Now, there has already been so many uh, like reaction videos to it. I'm not going to do any of that because I don't want to get copyrighted, but instead I'm actually going to try to explain the lore for you guys uh, in, in, a, in the most basic form uh, as I can. And we'll see how that goes. And I really do hope you guys enjoy this video. Please sh be sure to leave a like, comment, share this video with your friends, and also subscribe because, you know, we, we all need more subscribers. I, I, I need more subscribers. I, I really want more subscribers uh, for, for this year. Thank you very much. All right, so we're actually going to be reacting to the video itself, guys. Um, and for the sake of avoiding copyright, uh, I muted the audio on the video. Also, uh, I left the captions on so that everyone will know where we are. So, it, it's in this one frame right here alone. Actually, I think up until... Up. Up until this point right there. That was the first teaser sequence that Riot released before the release of this uh, cinematic officially. So... If for people who may be asking, who is this person getting attacked by these tribesmen? Well, this is Trindamir. And Trindamir is a worshipper of an, of the Iron Boar. And you may be asking who are the tribesmen attacking Trindamir? They are followers of Volibear. They are the Ursine. Now the Ursine they they practically just hate everyone. I mean, in this one photo alone, it does show that, well, Trindamir is quite close to death. But, as we all know, Trindamir doesn't really die easily, especially if you play League of Legends. You guys know how annoying. And transition into an open battlefield. And this is where something is quite cool. These two are Kale and Morgana. Morgana's on the right, Kale's on the left. For, for everyone who needs to know. And so people may be asking, wait, these don't look like the Kale and Morgana that we know. Well, to give you a time uh, a time frame, in this sequence of the cinematic, it is taking place during the times of ancient Demacia, because if you guys can see the buildings uh, behind them, they don't have the iconic uh, color white walls of the Demacian structures. That's because during ancient Demacia, they didn't have the advanced research yet to use petrocyte for them to apply for their weapons, their armor, and their buildings. And it's during the time of ancient Demacia, it is the twin protectors, basically referencing Kale and Morgana, uh, essentially protecting Demacia from its enemies. And it is at this time where they started to fight reveal bam the big boy <laughs> big boy Aatrox now Aatrox yes he did fight Kale and Morgana way way back in the day and it's in this cinematic where not only is he fighting himself uh, by himself but He's also fighting alongside his sort of slave followers, to say the least.
Um, and I think if we could make a skip, uh, hold up, skip right here. Bam, right there. Aatrox did his pose. He did his iconic pose. And also you can see he has an army. Now people may say, do Darkens have an army? Well, pretty much so. Especially Aatrox. But these guys are not really corrupted. These guys are basically a slave army. They are sort of like cultist followers, to say the least. And it is in an it is in this dire situation where a very, very good detail actually uh, takes place. To give you an idea of the sword that both Kale and Morgana are wielding, those are basically, basically the two halves of their mother's sword. So, in this dire situation, they see that Basically, Morgana sees that she has no choice but to basically ditch her mother's sword, ditch her armor, and basically use her magic. Now, even in ancient Demacia, right, using magic is basically still a big no-no. Kale picks up the other half. And she gives a very judgmental look at her younger sister. Not because she's... Not only because she's using magic in the Masia, but also is the fact that she just had the audacity to leave her mother's sword behind. So after binding Aatrox down, Gale just uses her passive. <laughs> Rip Aatrox. And now, we transitioned to Ionia. Now, I don't really know who are these, pe uh, these people uh, attacking the village because the mass doesn't make it clear. And here... And here we thought we got a new character. Or maybe a past character from the lore introduced. I thought it would be the Master of Wukong. Or no, not the Master of Wukong. The Master of Master Yi or Master Doran. But no. The man who did the classic uh, circle step over this line type of move. Yeah, laugh all you want, boys. With... That facial scar, it reveals to us that this is Yasuo. But the difference here is that he looks quite old. Beat his ass, boy. <laughs> now, people may be asking why is he not using the sword? Now, if we take into account that this is a time skip into the future and that Yasuo is quite old, it seems like he is done killing. So if you guys know the plot to, let's say, the anime, the very classic anime Samurai X, or by its real name, Rurounin Kenshin, it is about a ronin samurai who basically gives up on killing and that he wields a blade that is fit to not kill anymore. Like, the sharp side is on the back end of the blade, and on the front end of the blade, it's blood. And in this case, Yasuo, he, he is basically done with killing, which is why he was wielding a stick. But since he got taken down, the boss realizes, he basically said, all right, maybe one last time, I'll kill. He picks up the sword of one of the raiders, Uses his wind wall. The boss runs away like a bitch. Steps forward. And. If you guys didn't notice. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you did not notice. The first time watching this. But. Every time. He strikes. One of. The raiders. 
with his blade. He's actually not killing them. Because if you look at his blade right here, he's actually using the win. He's using his win technique to basically not cut his opponent, not to spill any more blood, because again, he's done with killing. So he's basically just beating the ever-living crap out of him. Basically, we're rolling Kenshin style if he had win, uh, win technique. Again, boss runs like a bitch, uses the tornado to kill, uh, beat him, not kill him. And then, it is by this point where, from the looks of it, Yasuo uh, basically accepts his death. Because he's killed so many people over his life that he is basically just done. And he doesn't use his wind wall here. He could have, but he chose not to. So he basically just met his fate by meeting the Hail of Arrows. And then we uh, transition back to turn the mirror into basically the present day, I would say. And you can see that Snowflake gets absorbed by the blade. And basically, his Trindomir's blade is a true ice weapon. And Trindomir is an iceborn. So if you're an iceborn, you can wield weapons that are made out of true ice. If, you can't, if you're not an iceborn, you'll basically die when you touch types of weapons. You'll freeze to death. But, again, since Trindomir is an Iceborn, he's able to touch it. And the setting that we are in right now is basically within the Death Realm. Now, if you guys know how Trindomir works in-game, he has his ultimate called the Undying Rage. Basically, he doesn't... He basically just doesn't die <laughs> in, the, in the ultimate. So, it's in the Death Realm, and with the look on his face... This probably was not the first time he's been in here. He's probably fought... Yep, and there's, there they are. There's Kindred. There's the Lamb. That's one half of Kindred. And there's the Wolf. The other half. Flex the arrow. The Wolf goes in. And also, a nice detail about the Wolf... He has feet. In game, he usually is kind of like a spirit, like a like a puff of smoke, usually. But it seems like in the death realm, uh, he's more like in the death realm itself instead of the physical realm, more uh, in the wolven form. And now, if you look into Trindomir's eyes, we can see the undying rage kick in. Now, where does the undying rage come from? The Undying Rage actually comes from Aatrox. Aatrox and Trindomir fought, and it's like like centuries after uh, Aatrox fought uh, Kale and Morgana, so that gives you sort of the time, the time frame uh, as well. Spins, he uses his E, breaks the bow, and then you can see a little head tilt from the Lamb, the Lamb of Kindred, and it's kind of basically uh, saying to the audience, well, that's strange. I'm supposed to kill you. I'm supposed to claim your soul, but you are fighting me, which is not normal for Kindred. Flex the arrow with his arm guard, fights off the wolf again, and then lowers the bow, and that basically signals us that Kindred is not going to take the soul of Trindomir just yet. That's basically what the Lamb is saying. Ah, maybe maybe not today. And then, Enchanted Crystal Ice Arrows passes through Trindomir, or passes by Trindomir, kills the two guys, and there is Trindomir's wife, Ash. And yes, Ash and Trindomir are married. It's basically an arranged political marriage. Like, you know, it's those old-fashioned marriages, like marriages forges alliances and stuff in history. But it's 
But over the years, as they got to know each other, they actually eventually do fall in love. Which is why Trindamir actually starts to feel a lot calmer. Also, if you guys also notice, his shoulder pad, Trindamir's shoulder pad is actually damaged. Uh, by the wolf. They feel like more is coming. Ash uses her hawk to signal for reinforcements, and that's the end of the cinematic. So, very, very good. Like, a very good cinematic from Riot. I mean, almost 100 million views. Over a million likes already. I don't know what the real ratio is uh, between the like and dislike, but with that good of a reception, I'm pretty sure it was a, uh, I'm pretty sure it was a success. Now, I actually want to go back to this frame right here. So if we, so if we uh, notice, all of the other raiders are dead. So the fight between Trinomir and Kindred, we could say it all happened within his mind within the Undying Rage. So we could maybe theorize that that's what he sees every time he goes into his ultimate or his Undying Rage. In his mind, he's fighting off Kindred. But in reality, he's fighting off the enemies that he's fighting uh, back in reality. So that's a pretty good detail that I would like to point out. and. I think that is pretty much it. I think I will leave you guys with that. So it's basically just a very simple TLDR explanation behind the cinematic in terms of its lore. It's like maybe small details that you guys missed. But other than that, that's all there is to this video. So I really hope you guys enjoyed. Please, uh, please sure to leave a like. Comment under this video, subscribe to my channel, share this with your friends because why not? And I will see you guys in the next one. Over and out.